And what's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, it is your boy Cheap Ludes, and I am back with another pack opening video, man. So, we got some new throwback moments packs today, so if you're new to the channel, subscribe man. If not, uh, drop a comment down below, let me know what you think of these packs, because they're interesting. They're obviously not loading yet, because right at 10 o'clock, as 2K is putting the packs on, they never actually load into the game for like one or two minutes, so... Throwback moments Southwest are dropping today. Here they are. Pink Diamond Steve Francis, who you guys know I'm stoked about that. I'm a Steve Francis guy forever. Honestly, looking at him, might not be that great, though. Mark Gasol, basically a Hakeem clone. A little bit slower, but a little bit bigger and stronger, so some trade-offs there. Julius Randle, sending every Knicks fan into a frenzy. Um... He should be decent. Uh, Manu Ginobili, continuing the trend of, like, basically scaled-down versions of elite cards from the beginning of the year. He should be fun. He's a lot cheaper than Pink Diamond, Manu, I'm guessing. And Sean Bradley, the bane of everyone's existence last year. Um, yeah, he's probably not going to be very good, realistically. <laughs> if I'm being completely honest with you, he probably won't be very good. But I'll go into these cards a lot more in detail at the end of the video. But for now... I'm going to open some packs, man. Uh, my luck's usually not that good, so we'll see what's up today. I'm not entirely sure. Now, are we getting glitches off the rip here? Oh, we might have a good day. Uh, that'd be a negative. We got Sean Bradley. I mean, at least it's something from the set. I mean, it could be worse, I suppose. All right, let's keep it going. I really want Steve Francis, like, really badly, to be honest with you. Um... Yeah, that's about normal. Jeremy Lamb's still in the league. Okay, that's crazy. I had no idea. I haven't heard that dude's name in like three years. I'm over here talking about Jeremy Lamb, who's like living his dreams playing in the NBA while I'm sitting in a room talking about virtual cards. Yeah, I wonder who's uh, having a better life right now. Probably Jeremy Lamb. There we go. Jashon Tate. What up, dude? He looks so confident in that picture. All right. Amethyst. That's fun. Honestly, it's better than what I normally get in these packs, so... Oh, I don't even think this is Manu. Oh, wait, no, it is. He's just a 90 overall instead of a 91 for some reason. Alright, that's fine. That helps with the overall, so I'm cool with it. Manu should be alright. I liked his card in the beginning of the year, so... I'm kind of interested to see how he plays in relation to the Pink Diamond Manu. I'm guessing it's going to be like the Amethyst Blake, where he's just a scaled-down version, but plays basically the same. Alright, so three packs in, we got two cards from the set. That's not terrible. Not a lot of people are going to be opening these packs, so... That's going to be kind of a good thing. Oh, here we go. Oh, it's just another Amethyst, but I mean, you know, whatever. I'm definitely hitting more shakes than normal, so that's fine. 20, I think it's Manu. Okay, I got another Manu. He's probably going for around 20k. That's usually what the Amethysts go for initially from these sets, just because not a lot of people open these. I don't think Clay Thompson's really a hot ticket card. I don't think a lot of people are going for that. I mean, it's like a 1.5 million MT lock in, and he'll be not outdated, but like surpassed in like a week after he comes out, probably. So, this is normal pack luck. We got Mason Jones again. <laughs> just a bunch of bronzes. You know, I don't have much to complain about at this point. The pack luck's not terrible here. I'll end up getting my MT back. But the problem is, is I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep opening packs, so that's where the issues are going to lie. Uh, yeah, okay. That's not good. Got Rondo and Schroeder. Ooh, teammates. Are they a dynamic duo? No, I didn't think so. Who's Schroeder's dynamic duo? I'll have to check that out. I wonder, it's probably Julius, no, I was going to say Julius Randall, why? Um, I wonder who it is, maybe it's Montrez Harrell, I don't know, who's on the bench unit. Uh, once again, Landry Shamit, nice. Yeah, this, uh, I think I might have used up all my luck in the beginning there, but uh, I'll open a few more packs, let me see how close I am to 500k. I'll just go down to 500k and we'll see what's up. I can open, like, one or one more pack. I'll open two more packs. That's fine. 
see if I get lucky. That'd be a negative. I mean, unless Emerald... Ooh, Gold Tireless Defender. Ooh la la. Got Jaron Jackson Jr., who's, instead of picking up a basketball shot, has like a model shot as his card. That's fine. Yeah, let's do one more. Why not? See if we get lucky here. I don't, I don't think we did. Oh, I spoke too soon. Okay. Man, I really, really, really hope this is Steve Francis, dude. Notice how excited I am. <laughs> I just these cards aren't very exciting, but I'm I mean I'm surprised. Western Conference '96. All right. Oh fuck. Oh no. Come on, dude. I don't want Mark Gasol, man. <sighs> Whatever. You know what? He's gonna be going for a lot. He's a center. Not a lot, but I'll at least get 100, 150k for him. <sighs> I'm just not excited because he doesn't fit my play style, and I really... I'm a huge Steve Francis fan. That was one of my favorite players growing up, so I was really hoping that was going to be Steve Francis, but it's not, and I'm just so tired, and I have no time for this. What up, Rashawn Holmes? I like Rashawn Holmes, actually. Oh, that's... It's so disappointing. I mean, I'm never, like, going to sit here and whine about a pink diamond, but at the same time, damn, I really wish they would have gave me Steve Francis, but... Maybe I'm wrong, maybe Marcus Gasol is good, I haven't even looked at his stats or anything yet, so maybe I'm complaining for no reason, right? Maybe, probably not. Oh, there we go. We're having a good pack opening today, I don't know what's going on. This means Friday's gonna be a fucking nightmare, that's for sure. There we go, we get a diamond too, we're getting Julius Randle in the mix as well. Um, wait, I don't think so. No, this is fucking stuff, alright. Whatever. I don't even know what these diamond cards from the current set are even going for. I'll have to look into that. I have literally no idea what price they're going for. Dwayne Casey. Looking all stoic. Alright. So, yeah, I gotta say, um, should you open these packs? Probably not. <laughs> like, no, probably not. Should you spend money on these packs? Absolutely fucking not. Definitely not. Um, should you lock in for clay? No. Uh, should you lock in this set if you do happen to pull all five cards? Absolutely not. 100% not. Um, a, I don't recommend going for Clay Thompson at all. I mean, Clay will be fun, don't get me wrong. He's going to be one of the best catch-and-shoot cards in the game. And he will benefit squads, but it's just the amount of you know, MTE you have to lock in for him. It's going to be absurd. And they're going to end up dropping like a pink diamond Clay like three weeks after the Opal comes out or something like that. So, or at least dropping someone with Clay Thompson base. So I don't think it's necessary to lock in. And if you do really want Clay, I would just wait three, four weeks after the lock in comes out when the super packs are out, where everything's way cheaper and it won't cost nearly as much to lock in for. That being said, I'm hitting on these packs right now. But if you've watched any of my other pack openings, this is not the norm. I'm not going to tell you these packs are juiced. They're not. Like, I am just happen to be getting very lucky today. And 2K is just going to use up all my luck on these pack openings. And Friday, I'm not going to get a single thing because it's going to be like retro. And they're going to have thick cards. And I'm going to get nothing. Pulled like three Manus, though. So don't use this pack opening as an indication on whether or not you should open packs. Because I will tell you time and time again, absolutely not. If you want to take your MT and go open three, four packs, maximum five, and just test your luck... Sure, yeah, go right ahead. Um, but if you're considering, oh, should I buy 200k VC? No, no, fuck no, absolutely not. But I'm having okay luck today. It's it's not typical. This is my normal luck, <laughs> like right here. Like Jameis Ramsey coming through with like three silver jerseys, like in a four game contract. Like that's typically my luck that I have. Uh, I wonder if we get anything else. That would be pretty cool. I think I've got, what, I've got Marc Gasol, a Diamond Steph Curry, like three Manus, and Sean Bradley so far. Decent haul. I mean, I'm definitely going to get my MT back. I'll be back where I'm at because I'm going to end up selling Gasol. I'll open like two more packs and see what happens. Probably get another Manu. Oh, here we go. Probably get another Manu or something, but hey, it is what it is. 
Jim Boylan, bald headed fuck. Oh. Uh, uh, okay. It's a diamond, so it's either Julius Randle or a current player. Let's find out. Western. Okay, it's Julius Randle because it's a 94, right? Yep. Honestly, I might end up keeping Julius Randle. Um, the reason for that is uh, <clears throat> I think next season we're going to get Spotlight Sims. Well, we're going to get Spotlight Sims at some point. They came around March last year, so it would make sense that next season we would get them. And there's going to be a run on Pelican players. Like, Pelicans and Hornets were the toughest teams to fill out last season, or last year. And I think that's going to continue again, so I'll probably keep Julius Randle. Because it's going to be nearly impossible to fill out a 10-man rotation over, you know, over a Ruby, which is kind of what you need, at least last year, uh, for the Hornets and for the Pelicans. So, I might have to keep Julius Randle based on that, but if he's going for like 80k, I can't justify that shit. He'll be cheaper then anyway, so it doesn't really matter. It just kind of depends. If he's, I don't think he'll be going for that much. I'm guessing he's going to go around 40, 50k, same as like Paul Pierce and everything like that, so... Done opening packs, let's talk market. So, yeah, I almost pulled the whole set. I just didn't pull Steve Francis, which is not surprising. So, Sean Bradley, ugh. I mean, he's seven foot five. He can't, he can shoot. No, he can't shoot anything. His ball handle is 28, 95 block, 93. 28 speed. He got an 88 hustle, though. He tries really hard. Uh, pretty much all defensive and big man badges. Um, you can't upgrade a bunch of his badges, but. I don't know. <clears throat> What's he going for? There's like five Sean Bradleys out here. There's six. He's going for 19,000. He'll probably end up evening out around 10. Ten's about where he'll probably stay. Manu. Oh, they gave my man the 2K. Wow. It's the 2K20 jersey. Bro, 2K, you can't even upgrade the generic jersey. You still have it on 2K20. It's like you're not even trying. 22,000 for Manu. I'm probably just going to go put him up now, though. Um, sorry, you guys have to watch this. I just want to make sure to get as much MT for these guys as humanly possible before. Because um, he's going to end up dropping to about 10, 15K later today, which is still... Honestly, it's not a terrible price for him, but there's no point in going to grab this Manu when guys like... Honestly, the free Norman Powell is probably better than Manu off the rip like the free moments one um keep in mind we're gonna be getting moments cards thursday and another couple free ones to remember that um or aaron afalo is probably a better option and honestly brian russell is probably better too so uh let's see julius randall well let's talk about Monty real quick because like i said i want to compare them to the pink diamond one and see how close they are yeah really close um pink diamond one's obviously better than this one uh, definitely got a better midi, better three-pointer for sure. Uh, most stats are the same, though, but that Manu is going to be a little faster, a little better at defense, and a little better at shooting than the Amethyst one. Um, this one actually has better tendencies, though, because they lowered his foul tendency from an almost ridiculous 99 hard foul tendency to 10. Badge-wise, almost identical. Um, I upgraded some badges on my Manu early on in the year. So, this actually makes more sense. So, the Amethyst one is pretty similar to what the Pink Diamond Manu starts out at. I believe Pink Diamond Manu starts out at 4 or 5 Hoff badges and, what, 23 golds, I think. So, just in line with the Blake Griffin, it's got a similar badge count, but it's obviously doesn't have those 9 silver badges, too. So, definitely a worse overall card, but at the same time, he's much lower on the overall scale. So it does kind of help out. So there's advantages to both cards is what I'm saying. Um, if you're a big Manu fan, you don't want to spend 60k on an outdated pink diamond. Spending 10 on that one's not bad. Julius Randle. He's actually looking to be like a pretty good uh, point forward type guy. Um, similar to like kind of how Blake Griffin plays. He's probably around the same shooting wise. Yeah, he doesn't have any shooting badges off the rip really. Um, so you're going to have to actually upgrade those yourselves. I recommend putting Rim Protector on them immediately, just it'll help them in the defensive end. Um, Lightning Reflexes, too, if you want to make them a little better at defense. Uh, if you're going to run them at Point Dimer, obviously would be important. Tight handles. But giving them Deadeye, Flexible, Hot Zone, ra Range, I guess. Um, but if you really want to do it cheap, Tireless Shooter and Volume Shooter. Volume Shooter, especially, is one of the most slept-on badges in this game. 
fully gold, it'll run you about 2,700 MT. And it'll help him out immensely. I make a lot more shots than most people do with Jonathan Isaac because I put volume shooter on him. So. Uh, Tendencies-wise, he's solid. 92 pass intercept for a big man is really good. Um, Julius Randle, all in all, pretty solid diamond big man. Um, that being said, is he much better than the free Jeremy Grant that we got? I don't really think so. <clears throat> I mean, he's definitely better, but is he 70,000 MT better? I don't really think that's the case at all. But if his price does come down and you're a big fan of Julius Randle, maybe you're a insane Knicks fan, or maybe you've just been following Julius Randle's career for ever, then 40 50 k is not bad for this Julius Randle card. And the reason I say that is because if we do get a spotlight sim, you're going to be able to make a lot of MT on it because there's going to be absolutely no Pelicans, guys. Marcus Gasol. He's a Hakeem clone. He's got a 47 ball handle, which is unfortunate. Uh, 65 pass accuracy, also unfortunate. 92 block, you got an 80 steal, 80 perimeter defense, 96 interior. Good rebounding stats. 76 speed, which is going to be kind of slow, so he is going to be a little bit lumbering, but he is 7 foot 1, so he'll make it down the court. It's similar to how he might move pretty well. It's hard to tell. Um, catch and shoot corner specialist, Hall of Fame defensive leader, intimidator, heart crusher. Uh, he's got really good badges. And then he has Hall of Fame volume shooter, which is super important. Um, pretty much all of them are post moves. Gold, difficult shots. Okay. Dimer, clamps, interceptor. Yeah, he's got really nice badges. Um, dead eye, flexible, hot zone hunter, range extender, no steady. Uh, badges I would give him. Lightning reflex. Re lightning reflexes if you play a lot of off ball. Would be definitely helpful. I don't think Showtime does much for him, but if you want to give it to him, that's cool. Clutch shooter is going to be huge um, just because a lot of people are going to leave Marcus all open in the last two minutes of games because they're going to focus on more of your offensive stars so giving him clutch shooter which just gives him a boost in those moments is going to be key he has Hakeem's jump shot so it is a little bit slow so any shooting boosts you can give this guy are going to be really helpful there's not very many of them up uh, price wise he'll be more of a budget center option as far as a guy of this price I'm guessing he probably sits around 150 to 100 um he possibly ends up being by it now depends how easy he is to draw it looks like steve francis is the easier card to draw or at least the card that people are more willing to sell which makes sense because there's a lot of point guards out right now if he goes down below 100k i'm caught i'm buying him instantaneously i'm just a huge steve francis fan in real life in game he's not my favorite card but he's all right he's basically a baron davis clone like this Baron Davis and this Steve Francis are almost identical. Um, they vary a little bit on stats. Like Baron Davis is a plus two better three point shooter. Um, Steve Francis is a better dunker, like passer Baron Davis, but Steve Francis looks to be better on the uh, defensive end and have more stamina. Yeah, yeah, they look pretty much identical. Like they're basically yeah, Steve Francis is basically a Baron Davis clone. I'm curious if he has the same jump shot. He has Dion Waiter's jump shot, which is the same jump shot as the Amethyst, uh, Steve Francis, which I like that jump shot a lot. So, And this one's on quick, so his jump shot should be pretty solid. Ooh, yeah, I'm interested in Steve Francis. The badge count-wise, they're pretty similar as well. Steve Francis has the better of the badge counts. Yeah. As far as badges to Adam, Interceptor, you don't really need to give him corner specialist, you can. Interceptor, Intimidator, some defensive badges. Um, let's see what else he needs. Flexible. He is a Baron Davis clone. They just didn't give him flexible either. Oh my god. All right. <clears throat> yeah, so if you like Baron Davis and you want a better version of Baron Davis that's a little more offensive, I'd probably go with Steve Francis. He seems like a fun card, but I, if he's under 100k, that's the only reason I would pick him up. If he's over 100k, absolutely don't. So anyways, it's been your boy Cheap Ludes. As always, new episode of the podcast we just dropped earlier today, so check that out. Check my description for all my stuff. I'll be back with a bunch of videos today, including the squad series and the rest of my tier list. So check that out. Peace.